Welcome back, friends. So I'm super excited to share with you what I've been working on, and that is bringing more guests on to the channel. And these are not just guests that spend a lot of time sewing or even the majority of their time sewing, but people that like to sew just for the fun of it, or maybe sew for their home and how practical it can be to implement sewing in part of your either homemaking or everyday life. And so I actually have my friend, Dr. Claudius Childs here with me today, and she and I met via Instagram and she has found that she really likes to sew curtains and draperies for her home, which is so unique. So I loved hearing her story because I actually don't um, sew a lot of drapes and curtains. And so I loved hearing you know, her methods, all about her machine, and even some of the challenges and frustrations that she shares. And this definitely is a work in progress as I learned to record videos. So my apologies when you check, um, when you view this video, you'll notice that I did not um, save the recording with side by side so that you see both of us at the same time. So it keeps flipping between screens. So my apologies for that. Next time I'll know on the back end how to save the recording so that you can see both of us um, on the same screen rather than having um, it flip back and forth every time that we talk. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and lead you right into our conversation. All right. So welcome, Gladius. I'm so glad that you joined me here. Um, and can you just take a moment to introduce yourself? Tell me a little bit about you. Okay. Well, my name is Gladys Childs, and I am an author, a speaker, a pastor's wife, religion professor, and mom. And uh, my goal is just to help people learn more about God and faith or overcome questions or issues they have so that they can grow deeper in their walk with God. That's awesome. So I know that we connected probably at least a year ago, a little bit over on Instagram, um, because I have a, some sewing feed going on and I noticed that you commented a little bit. So I kind of assumed that you sew a little bit, but I wasn't sure how much and kind of what your background is in sewing. So I'd be really interested to hear like how that plays into your life. Well, my mom sewed um, when I was little. She made all of my clothes. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, so all my dresses. And I was that child in the 80s who still wore dresses to middle school um, because my mom made my dresses. So, of course, that made me really popular in middle school. <laughs> um, and then when I went to high school, I took home ec and learned to sew there and um, made blouses and different stuff that you make in home ec. And then when I was in college, I thought, you know, this is probably going to be a good skill to have. So I took sewing in college again um, for a whole year. Oh. And then um, mm -hmm. now, though, I get really frustrated when I sew. <laughs> so most of my sewing is related to making drapes because I'm free and drapes are expensive. So I, I like I've made those, but mm. uh, and I fix things. But other than that, I I don't sew a whole yeah. lot. Yeah, so I find that comment about drapes. So do you literally buy fabric yardage and you're cutting out drapes and like lining them or? You're like thrifting them and like making them fit your windows. No, I buy fabric and I okay. line them. Yeah, I, I do it all. And sometimes I've done really fancy ones, like with the swags at the top. Mm -hmm. um, but nowadays I usually just, I try to do straight and simple <laughs> and easy without a lot of fuss. <laughs> Um, so I find that so interesting that you say that you do drapes because that's actually one thing that I typically am like, nah, I'm good. I'm not going to make drapes for you. <laughs> um, only because it's so much fabric and mm -hmm. it's a lot of fabric to lay out. Although, I mean, I do slip covers, but for some reason there's this thing with drapes that I'm like, ah, it, it, it's all right. I'll pass. Yeah, well, when I do drapes, I... 
I started on the floor because that's all I had. So mm -hmm. the fabric would be rolled down on the floor. But then as I've gotten older, like we'll bring tables in and I'll roll it out on the tape. So I've got like a setup to make it a little easier. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. when you do drapes, do you have like, there's the old fashioned like drape hook or you do them oh, just no. on a rod? Well, years ago I did, um, well, not those kind of drape hooks. I know what you're talking about because my mother-in-law makes the ones with the hooks yeah. that you sew. Yeah, in. it's like pleated. Yeah, you can clip on. So okay, mine you can clip on. And then the latest ones I've made, um, all of my windows have a lot of trim around them, and so it took me forever to figure out what drapes I could put in them. And so I came up with. There's a board at the top that's covered in fabric mm -hmm. and then I've made the drapes, but I stapled them literally to the back of the board and gathered them and stapled. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like the board and the drapes are hanging down and then we just mm -hmm. inserted it inside the windows. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I've definitely mm -hmm. seen those done. I've actually never done that, um, which is kind of interesting that we're having this conversation. <laughs> So I know you mentioned that you get um, a little stressed when you sew. So I was curious what, like, so what exactly is a stressor? Like, is it that like, like things don't work out the way you planned or something goes wrong with the machine? The machine is good. I've got a machine from the seventies that my mother-in-law <laughs> gave me. It's super simple. It doesn't do anything fancy. Um, when I'm sitting down, to actually sew, like literally put the fabric through the machine, that's not a big deal. It's the cutting out, especially if it's a complicated pattern. I struggle figuring out the pattern and getting it right. And that just, yeah, yeah, I lose it when I'm doing <laughs> that part. But the sewing, once I'm to that part, it's all good. It's all good. Oh, so that's interesting. So then it's the cutting. So are you... Like, so if it's for drapes, are you buying, like, do you like ones that don't have a large repeat? So it's like, you have to be really precise about the placement of like, say a large picture or design so that they're even on both panel. It's not that. Well, <laughs> no, it's not that. It's literally figuring out the pattern and like, you know, how to, like I know how to lay out the pattern on the piece of fabric. So that's not it. It's when I'm trying to put the pieces together and how the pieces yeah. go together. And Oh, yeah. so you are using um, like a drapery pattern, not just, um, oh, so I've actually, this is, an, I've never used a drapery pattern. I, when I've made them, I just am like, okay, well, I want them to be this long and this wide, and this is how much seam allowance. So I've actually never opened a drapery pattern to see what exactly it says. Well, that's more um, like for the balances or if they get fancy, because mm -hmm. if it's just a straight drapery, you know, I don't, yeah. I just measure yeah. and cut and sew, but it's when it has the swag or like my mother-in-law, she can make whatever kind of drape any like anything that you can imagine anything you've seen and, and if she can't find a pattern she just makes her own like i would yeah. die before i made my own pattern but so but it's yeah. they get complicated and she's with the balance yeah. is really tricky thing so yeah 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 so that's an interesting because i know you had that question like how do you stay calm with sewing and i was thinking that it would be more of like a machine problem because i just hear that over and over and over um, is that, mm -hmm. you know, when you're sewing the stitches catch and then suddenly you have this huge jam, but it's so much is, it's true. Like when you do something over and over repetitively, like you just get, you like, it becomes a little more like, um, muscle memory. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's a lot about, I think our expectations, like for me, my, like the, the bane of my existence would be like finding a new piece of technology and being like, right. I like even recently I bought a new speaker that I was trying to use earlier that didn't work. So reading the directions and trying to figure that out, I'm like just losing my mind. <laughs> um, so I think that that's probably really true for that type of sewing in a similar, mm -hmm. it's like almost like we have to talk ourselves into like, 
being calm and like, it's okay. I just have to give myself the mental space and even the time. I know Mm -hmm. personally when I am doing something like that, like I didn't give myself enough time to read the directions for the speaker, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which (laughs) is just like full confession, right? We're always a little bit in a hurry. But I wonder if that's the case. Um, Even right now I have a sewing student and I always start them on a pattern because I like them to learn how to read a pattern. And so it's Mm -hmm. simple pajama pants, but I prefer that they go and they'll buy it from the store because you want, like I want them to be able to go to the store, buy a pattern and be able to read it. So any pattern they get, we're just going to go through it. But this one pattern, it was like talking about yoke and it was really meaning the pocket and I was like what do you say (laughs) you know when we read something like so I totally got the frustration of like a pattern sometimes so but now I'm curious so you have a machine from like the 1970s so what brand is it is it like a singer I think it's it's a singer Mm -hmm. okay it's a singer and do you have to like get it um serviced frequently like do or you service it yourself I service it myself that's awesome I take it apart and clean it and oil it and put it back it's but it's from the seven it's super simple so I just take it apart oil it and put it back um when when I'm using it a lot I haven't had to use it for a while because the great thing about drapes is once you make them they're up for a while they are up for a while to do it and they last for years yes Yes. And you get to look at them. Um, I think that that's one of my like gratifications about doing slip covers is because like you put a lot of work into it and you know that it's like used and looked at all the time, like even more so than mm-hmm. a piece of clothing, like cause clothes, you know, you wear them once a month or something or a wedding gown, you're wearing it literally one day and then you're preserving it yeah. and packing it away. Um, so those home tech projects I definitely like a lot that for that reason um so I was curious what um like what are the things that you find like most enjoyable about sewing do you like once you get into the machine do you find it to be like relaxing I like when I'm with the machine um because that that is that's that's great you know like when you you're sewing and it's just going and then like when you're done and you can see the finished product. I like sewing best when it's done, just to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I love when that. I'm sitting at the machine and then when it's done. Those are my yeah. two favorite things of sewing. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I am not good about the celebrating the doneness. That's a good one. <laughs> but um, like relishing, oh, I'm finished. I'm finished and I can move on. Um, mm-hmm. So... I wanted to transition to your book a little bit because I know you just published a book. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. And thanks. there was um, of a part in the very beginning that totally caught my attention, of course, because it was about sewing. So I, just, I have a copy of Goddess Book and it's in the beginning. And I loved to, I wanted to point that out, that I loved how you... Um, really broke down the gifts of the spirit in a very unique way that like kind of transitions I think some of the thought of what we might think of like in like um I don't want to say Christian lingo but like it's not in the box anymore and kind of making it super practical so this quote I'll read it and then if you want to share on it I was curious like um I loved the imagery of sewing and mm-hmm. thought, well, in what way did it make you think of sewing? If you want to expound on that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's from when you were talking about love, the gift of uh, the fruit of the spirit of love. It says, our relationships with colleagues, friends, or family are like intricate tapestries woven with threads of shared moments, challenges, and growth. We often believe that if love is genuine, it should flow effortlessly. But remember, even the most beautiful tapestries have knots and tangles on the underside. Those knots represent moments of struggle and compromise and the things that strengthen our bond. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that um, when you look at a sewing garment or drapes, like it really should look pretty. And uh, I was taught that it should look pretty from the 
backside too, but you know, you, you can tuck and hide things and press, but if you really start getting this stuff, sometimes there are knots and tangles and some things are a hot mess, but you should, you should try to like when you're sewing. Um, that's, I mean, my mother-in-law says, you know, things should always look pretty all the time, but when you really start taking stuff apart, it can be kind of ugly under there. And, um, but it takes all of that effort. It takes all the sewing and sometimes going back over things or ripping stuff out or um, sometimes you have to make knots. If you don't make knots, your, mm -hmm. your stuff is going to come uh, undone. Yeah. And so it just, I just think sewing, that analogy works for so many things in life, but particularly love because we think everything's supposed to be easy and effortless, but that's not the way love is. And, mm -hmm. um, and sewing isn't always that way, but if you keep going, even when you have knots or tangles or stuff gets messed up, um, if you just keep working through it, you end up with something that's beautiful and that's worthwhile. Oh, I love that in terms of like, even the perseverance of, uh, and it is true. You know, I had never really thought about that. It's so true. We have to have a knot or else we, our thought will just come loose. Um, oh, I would say my ugliest mess on the back side of fabric is, if you call it that, is I do some cross stitching. And I know that some people can cross stitch and have like a, a pretty decent backside. Mm -hmm. Mine is not like it's <laughs> not even close. And I've just been like, you know what? I don't even care. <laughs> like if the front side looks good and I'm going to frame it, like eventually this is some very huge project I got like 16 years ago and that I was going to finish it that year and give it to my husband before we got married and didn't happen. So I currently have dug it out again and my kids are like, how long do you think they'll take? I'm like another couple of years. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, um, I think it's like 16 by 12 and it's oh, an eagle right. over a mountain. Yeah. I have no idea what I was thinking when I bought it. Um, <laughs> um, but I do, I love so much that you incorporated that into your book. So tell us a little more about your book and where they can find it. And um, maybe even about the structure. Cause I know it's more of a devotional than, um, an actual like sit down and read something cover to cover. Yeah. Um, so the book title is Busting Barriers, Overcome Emptiness and Unleash Fruitful Living. And it's the first of a three part series. And this mm -hmm. one focuses on the fruit of the spirit. And there's a chapter covering each fruit. And then I look at the the top five barriers that people usually have when it comes to love or joy or peace. Um, and I do that with each of the fruit of the spirit. And then, um, so there's psychological problems that we tend to have with those areas. Mm -hmm. And then I look at it from a scriptural point of view on how can we overcome those? Um, so that way we can really live into the fruits and live them out the way that God intended us to. And so that is how it's broken down. And it's a 40 day devotional. So each fruit of the spirit gets um, five devotionals. And then at the end of each section I have um, like a call to action and a personal affirmation, because if we don't do something differently, um, and if we don't change our thinking, it's hard to overcome whatever obstacle stands in our way. Yeah, I love that. I think it was, um, it's super practical. And at the end of each chapter, you, or at the end of each day, you really give the reader some very practical advice, or like tangible takeaways that can be applied to, I mean, that day, obviously, but you do want them to repeat the, mm -hmm. like the formational habit uh, as they move through it. So I thought that was really good. So, and I didn't realize that it's part of a three-part series that you're going to be continuing. Wonderful. Yeah. So this is the first one and it's available on Amazon, but the, so after we overcome our barriers, if we've been working on them, then the next book is going to be on really living abundantly into the fruit. Um, because I believe that God really meant when Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he, he meant that 
you only have life on certain days or only in certain seasons, but um, these things really can be tangible in our everyday life. So that's the second book, um, which isn't written yet. And then the third book will be leaving a legacy. So if you've overcome your barriers and you're really living it out, how can you help others live that out and leave a great legacy when you're no longer here? Oh, yeah. I love how um, you've made them stepping stones for each mm -hmm. other. And so how long have you been working on, uh, like, are those ready to come out or are you still a work in no. progress? There's still works in progress. So I had originally attended this just to be a, de a like a one-off devotional. And then, um, it was supposed to, the first book, Busting Barriers, Overcome Emptiness, was supposed to be done at the beginning of this year, but my brother passed away and I just had to mm. stop. And then um, when I picked it up again, you know, it had more time to percolate and I just felt God saying, there's so much more here. And like, I just like, why don't you do this and this? And I'm thinking, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it came about. But, but no, it's not ready yet. Um, if it's possible, I might try to get the next one out near the end of next year. Um, but if not, it'll be out in early 2025. Oh, it just depends wonderful. on how fast I can write. <laughs> oh, I am right there with you. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Um, and mm -hmm. then to like process the thoughts and to get them down. And yeah, it definitely takes a lot of time. And then even the formatting and the publishing and all yeah. of that. <laughs> The publishing yeah. and all that. And then because like the, my first draft that I sent out to my feedback group, it's amazing how much I changed stuff mm. based on feedback. So even if you write it, you, well, you should send your book out, like let other people look at it before mm -hmm. you, you publish it. Because I totally changed so many things around and um, like I didn't have personal stories in it the first time. And I had a couple of different oh. people say, you need your personal stories. And I was thinking... Well, I've seen devotionals without personal stories, but so many people said, we need your stories that I put my personal stories in mm -hmm. there as well at the beginning of each chapter, uh, which is interesting because that's what a lot of people comment on um, mm -hmm. to me are the stories, like they feel like they can relate. That's wonderful. So I am going to put links to all of that in the show notes so that you can go ahead and find Goddess Book on um Amazon and it's on Amazon and any other retail, probably all other book retailers. And, um, well, I think it's the, Am Amazon for sure. And then okay. I don't know where all else. <laughs> okay. Um, and then <laughs> what's the best place for people to connect with you? Instagram or, um, well, I'm on Instagram. Um, or you can just go to gladdischilds.com and then it has all my socials there. And then if you want to sign up to be part of my um, email list and some of the new stuff that I'm doing in the, in the year, you can find out information there. All right, great. Well, thank you so much. I absolutely love your drapery stories as well. <laughs> um, that's all new to me. I don't get nearly as many drapery stories from people as like the clothing stories so that was super interesting so and thanks so much for taking the time well thank you for having me and it's nice to to meet you like and talk to you instagram buddy 